Hello you guys and welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. My name is Katie and I'm so happy to have you here. Today I am talking about home organization, tidiness, a few things that we do every single day to maintain a tidy home. Jesse and I, we both work, we have three dogs, we have a child on the way. Our home is never perfectly clean all of the time, but there are things that we do to have this maintenance level of clean and organization in our home. I do want to note moving forward that the tips I'm mentioning in this video, we do not do perfectly 100% of the time. We have days where we're super busy or lazy days where we don't get all of this stuff done. Maybe we forget or we just don't feel like it some days. And that's okay. When it comes to maintaining a clean and tidy home, I have learned that when I expect perfection out of myself, 100% of the time I'm disappointed because it's just not realistic. These tips I'm going to mention in this video will not make your house spotless or perfectly clean 100% of the time or dog hair free if you're like me and have three dogs who shed and you just feel like you're living in dog hair. But the tips I'm sharing help me maintain a certain level of cleanliness to really help me so I don't feel overwhelmed. I'm the kind of person who gets really anxious when there's a lot of mess. I see dog hair all over the floor, dishes piled up in the sink, clutter everywhere. Having all of this clutter and mess in every single room of my house really does make me feel overwhelmed and anxious. So these are a few of my daily to-dos that I have to make my home clean, organized, tidy, and just a place where I actually want to be in. So the first thing that we do every single day is we make our bed. <laughs> I know it sounds really, really easy, and there is a lot of, you know, science between like productivity and making your bed every morning, but at the very least, it just helps my room not look chaotic. Making your bed every day, is a really easy way to make your home look more tidy. Whenever I go into our room and the bed is not made, the room looks messy. Our decorative pillows are taking up space, maybe on a chair or on the floor. The covers look disheveled. And it doesn't matter how clean and organized the rest of the room is, if the bed's not made, it looks cluttery. It looks unorganized. It looks messy. Making my bed every single day really contributes to the overall tidiness of the home. Another reason we make our bed every single day is we have three dogs. That is a huge reason. We have three dogs. They all shed to varying degrees and so we have a lot of dog hair and our dog they jump on our bed okay they sleep on our bed they jump on our bed and when it's not made you get dog hair in the sheets okay it's just unavoidable and I don't want dog hair in my sheets and I don't want our pug Lucy to lay on my pillow because if the bed's not made she likes to lay on my pillow specifically, not Jesse's, just mine. So it's also very practical for us to make our bed because like I said, I don't want dogs all in my sheets and I don't want Lucy all up on my pillow. Not only does it contribute to the overall cleanliness and tidiness of our home, it also keeps our bed like not full of dog hair and keeps our bed clean and nice so when we go to bed every single night, we are happy to do so. The second thing that we do every single day to maintain a tidy home is the dishes. We do the dishes every night before we go to bed. This is something that I actually stole from another channel here on YouTube, but first coffee, I will link her channel down below. She gives great decluttering cleanliness tips and tricks and things. She's amazing. Definitely go check her out. So on her channel, she mentions she does the dishes every night before going to bed. Why do that? You're doing something that future you will thank you for. There is nothing worse than waking up in the morning to a new day, walking downstairs and immediately seeing a sink full of dirty dishes. Maybe that's dramatic, but it's certainly not pleasant. It's not a pleasant thing to walk down in the morning and see your sink full of dirty dishes and think this is another thing I have to do today. I think similarly to your bed, it doesn't matter how clean our kitchen could be. Our kitchen could be spotless, but if there's a pile of dirty dishes in the sink, that's what your eye sees. It's visual clutter and 
filth. <laughs> and even though it is just right now the two of us, we accumulate a lot of dirty dishes. I don't know how or why. Like when we have this child and they're contributing their dishes, like I don't know how we don't all just drown in dishes all the time. So if we do not stay on top of doing the dishes, it will become overwhelming so quickly. So the point of doing the dishes every night before we go to bed is number one, it's one less thing that you have to do the next day. Most of us, I would argue, live fairly busy lives, but even if you have time to do the dishes, you don't really wanna spend all your free time doing the dishes. You may not want to dedicate a bunch of your time to doing the dishes. It's not something that I really love to do, so it's one less thing that I have to do the next day. It's something future Katie can thank past Katie for. And secondly, by doing this small task, relatively small task, every single day, over a long period of time, you're actually reducing the amount of time you're spending on these activities. You're reducing the chance that your dishes are gonna pile up to a huge mess that it will take you a long time to get through. So this means spending like five to 10 minutes every night. Jesse and I do this together most nights, but even if we do it by ourselves, we're loading the dishwasher and then we're washing the rest of the dishes by hand. It takes like five to 10 minutes. We can do it right before we go to bed. We start the dishwasher. Sometimes we don't even have to wash the dishes by hand, we can just load the dishwasher and we're good to go. So it takes five to 10 minutes a night, which is very doable in my opinion for our life. Versus if we let this pile up, for example, if we didn't do it and we have a sink full of dishes, to get through all of them might take 30 minutes or an hour of our time. So doing these little tasks will reduce the amount of that big mess later. And that's kind of what we're looking for on these daily tasks, these daily to-dos to maintain a tidy home. It's those little choices throughout your day versus trying to clean the entire mess in one day. We're just trying to reduce it by having these daily habits. The third thing we do every single day is vacuum. And I know what you're probably thinking. Katie, you're telling me that you physically take out your vacuum and vacuum every inch of your house every single day? No, that's not what I'm telling you. That I think that's completely unrealistic for most lifestyles. <laughs> it's not practical for my time. It's not practical for the life that I live to take that time to physically vacuum every single day. So I've talked about this in a previous video that I will link down below how we maintain a clean and tidy home with dogs, but I'm referring to robot vacuums, the DJ Roombas of the world, okay? So like I mentioned like a million times in this video already, we have three dogs, they all shed. We live in dog hair. So having these robot vacuums has been a game changer for us. And I don't use game changer lightly. I don't use that phrase lightly because honestly, this helps us so much. It's so easy to just go and press a button. You can schedule it. I'm pretty sure some of them have apps where you can schedule it to run at the same time every single day, but we go and we press a button and it just vacuums for us. Does it do a super in-depth amazing job? No, but it does have this, what I call the maintenance level of clean. That's what it accomplishes. It's keeping my home tidy and manageable by running this every single day. I still pull out my vacuum about one to two times per week to do like that. I don't wanna say deep cleaning, but to vacuum, you know, moving furniture out of the way and really giving it a good vacuum because the Roombas, the Sharks, the whatever, there's like a million brands of these robot vacuums. They're not gonna move things and vacuum underneath them, right? They don't do a super deep cleaning kind of job. But like I said before, I'm not letting this pile up, I guess. So the robot vacuums kind of maintain the clean until I can vacuum again. We actually have two robot vacuums. We have one upstairs and one downstairs. Robot vacuums tend to go on sale for like Amazon Prime Day, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, those kinds of deals. I always see deals on like sharks or Roombas or whatever. If you're looking at 
investing in one of these robot vacuums you can definitely wait till they're on sale where they are more affordable but i highly highly recommend them we use them every single day and like i said total game changer the fourth and final tip is to clean the clutter every single day and this is easier said than done i'm sure you have something in your house that is a catch-all for the clutter I could almost guarantee it. For us, it's our kitchen table. We walk in and that is kind of our dumping ground for all of our stuff. We drape jackets on the chairs. We dump our bags on the chairs. The kitchen table is what collects all of our clutter. We put things, oh, I need to donate this, and we just put this on the kitchen table. Like, it collects all of our clutter. And it actually has gotten to a point where we can't use our table for its intended purpose because there's so much stuff on it. There's literally no room to sit and have a meal together. And that, to me, is, screams a problem. So maybe yours is your kitchen counters because that's another big one. Dumping stuff on your kitchen counters, leaving stuff out on your kitchen counters, maybe that's for you. Maybe it's the chair in your room where you dump a bunch of your laundry on because you say it's not dirty, but it's not quite clean. I know everybody has a laundry chair in their bedroom. Yes, you can create organization systems to reduce this clutter. Absolutely. I love using baskets to organize my home. I think a lot of people use baskets to organize their home. You can dump all your stuff in there and it still looks nice and tidy. Sometimes these organization systems we have in our homes fail. Maybe it's because I'm being lazy and I don't really feel like taking my jacket <laughs> and putting it in the coat closet because I don't feel like it. Maybe we need to reevaluate our organization systems. Maybe we have too many things. You know, there's a lot that goes in it. So sometimes these organization systems fail. Every single day, we look around at the visual like surface level clutter and we put those things away. We go to our kitchen table, we put away all of our jackets, we put everything where it's supposed to go, we open the packages we got from Amazon, put that away, throw the box away or recycle it or whatever you decide to do. Putting away our laptop chargers that are sitting on the table for no reason. For kitchen appliances, every day putting those appliances away once you're done using them. For example, our toaster. Jesse uses our, our toaster most mornings for breakfast and we store our toaster in our pantry. So whenever we use it, even if we use it every single day, we bring it out on the ca kitchen counter, use it, and once it's cooled down and it, we're done using it, we put it back. Otherwise, it will start to clutter the kitchen counters. For us, we just go around every day and put away the clutter. And sometimes it's not perfect. I have noticed, even though our kitchen table is still kind of a catch-all for things and we need to work on our organization system, when we make the effort to declutter that table every single day, we have space to actually eat there now and it's not as overwhelming. Like I said, maintaining will lead to not a big mess that you have to dedicate a bunch of time to fix or clean or whatever. Another thing that we clean up every day is the dog toys on the floor. So your floor is a surface area as well. So we pick up all the dog toys, especially like this is something I do before I run the vacuums. I put all of the toys away. It's something you could do every single night, whether you have children or dogs, things that are left out on the floor, putting those away, putting away blankets on your couch, all of that surface clutter, just making an effort and committing to maybe five to 10 minutes every single day to go through and declutter those spaces will greatly impact and help the overall tidiness of our home. But it is a commitment. And I, I do wanna say, you do have to commit to putting this stuff away because it is really easy to be like, I'll do it tomorrow, and that becomes I'll do it tomorrow, and I'll do it tomorrow, and I'll do it tomorrow, and then it piles up to a big mess. So committing five to 10 minutes every single day to try to put away as much surface clutter as you can is key here. But like with all of these tips that I shared, some days will not be perfect, some days you're super busy and you don't get to this, but staying on top of the tidiness and the clutter will make your home more manageable. And it just gives your home an overall tidy feeling. It really contributes, to me, 
to make me relaxed in my own home. That is all I have for today's video. I hope you found these tips helpful. Please let me know any of your tidying tips that you do every single day. Let me know down below. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time. Bye.